Welcome back to the workshop. I'm Craig. Uh, this is a very quick and simple update video because I haven't made a video for ages. Um, I'll uh, turn the camera around and get started. Well, currently in the milling machine, I've got um, my wife's uncle's motorcycle clutch, and uh, we've done some welding on this to to strengthen this area. And we faced off the inside of the uh, inside of it because it was very thick. Um, we've left a raised section where it gets bolted on, and we're now removing these scoops. Um, we're going to have eight scoops around the edge, and then this mounting flange. We're also going to remove quite a bit of material in here. We're going to leave tabs for the uh, for the uh, screws that are, that are there. We're actually copying more or less copying. Um, one of these sports clutches from uh, from the magazine, this one here. Well, we're just taking inspiration from that one anyway. And replacements are available. So if we stuff this one up, uh, we'll just buy a, buy a racing one or buy a um, buy a standard one and uh, try again. And this is on the this is on the. Uh, rotary table that I got from Ted. I bought I bought this from Ted and it's um really useful, really accurate. Moves really smoothly. It's a Vertex brand. So I think it's the same one Stefan's got. It's a six inch or a 150mm. But obviously it hasn't had the scraping modifications and and Stefan treatment. It hasn't been Stefanized. <laughs> it's just it's just as it comes. Uh, the lathe is currently in a bit of a mess. It's covered in tools, covered in chips. Um, really needs a clean up. Um, yeah, table saws covered in clutch bits and measuring gear. The bandsaw motor is well. We're finished with the motor. Um, finished with the pulley and everything. But the um, what was going to become the um, Sort of 90 degree mounting bracket. I just haven't had a chance to look at that yet. Last time I did anything on these was a, pr I think it was pretty much Boxing Day, or oh, Christmas Eve, sorry. And that's how long it's been since I've been able to get back to the bandsaw. So the bandsaw is still sat there, and it uh, there's no blade on it at the moment, but it would work if I put the blade on it. But it's being used as a shelf at the moment. <laughs> Um, while I'm at the table saw, I've got stickers through from Marsh Wildman, um, which is uh, which is great. Thank you, Marsh. I don't quite understand the the ones that came that say for rectal use only. <laughs> Can't focus on that. Hold on a sec. I'm not sure what I'll use those for, but. Uh, Sure, I'll find something funny to do with them. <laughs> and also, I've been really looking forward to getting these. Hey up, hey up Tony. He's uh, he said, uh, liking the mix of content using wood machines and metalworking machines. It's amazing we both have a Wadkin AGS dimension saw, miles apart. Hey up Tony. Yep, I agree. Um, and this is this this is the saw he's talking about. Um, not the best light down here, but yeah, this is a Wadkin Burr's Green 10 inch AGS um, cabinet saw basically. It's got um, a right tilt motor. I made this enclosure for it to uh, sort of keep the dust under control. And uh, that's just um, uh, uh, MDF and plywood around a timber frame that sort of scribed to the shape of the body, and then I've um, put a hose port on it and it's shaped weirdly so that the um, dust can fall down and so that the motor can swing around and it's got a little hook there to hold a bit of excess cable works very well um, there's a bit of dust down here you can see so there's there's an area inside that I do need to uh, patch up but otherwise the, um, the extractor works quite nicely I've got I've got a, um, a one micron filter on it pleated filter 
So that does the job. Um, and Tony's got the same saw as this, but he's got a sliding wing that comes out this side so that you can cut panels very easily. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more about that. Um, one of the planned upgrades I've got for this machine is to use, is to extend this table so I've got more ripping capacity and to make up a steel Biesmeyer style fence for it. Um, basically I'd have a 3 by 2 inch or 75 by 50 um, box section steel on the front and then the the uh, fence will sort of ride along that. Um, what else can I show you? I've got some video lights that I've made. This is what I've been doing in the last few weeks as well. Um, these things are basically very thin, low profile, high power floodlights, 50 watts each. Um, daylight balanced. And I've put them on a stick and a base and the base is weighted. The base is weighted with basically a uh, cast iron exercise weight and that white plug that you see in the middle is just a mushroom that I've turned up to hold the thing on and that works very well really happy with those the only thing is the quality of light is a little bit harsh and I'd like to soften it with some diffusion so on the other one which is here I've been making this just knocking together this box which acts as a once it's painted, it'll act as a reflector on the inside. It will fit around the around the floodlight, and then on the front we'll have stapled some white ripstop nylon to act as a diffuser. And that will sort of quadruple the the light source, the size of the light source, so it'll be a softer light. That should be good. Over here, you can see is part of the stuff that Ted gave me. Some of these are in progress being cleaned. Most of this stuff here is actually clean. And some of these things are things that I had before. I've just cleaned up what I just cleaned up a bunch of rusty stuff together. So this is the uh the little four jaw that was rusty and horrible. And that's now nice and clean. It's all been apart. And uh I've got some new screws for it, so uh, they'll, they'll become the uh, drive screws for each of the jaws. So that's a work in progress. Um, this thing here is called a pulse trainer, and this is in the workshop. This is for the father-in-law, Alvin, and uh, it's. Um, Basically, this platform at the bottom vibrates, and you can control the time and the um, amplitude and all that stuff. And the problem with this is the the power switch is faulty. So I think the rocker switch itself is broken. So I'm just going to pull that apart and put a new one in. So uh, that's probably not interesting enough to make a video about, but anyway. Um, other new things I've got my hands on is a cast iron precision square that needs to be scraped in and a cast iron straight edge with a 45 degree. So that's ideal for um, sort of doing scraping in the ways on the cross slide and the, and the uh, top slide on the lathe. I forgot to mention Rustin Knox's Coat Hanger 2020. Uh, competition. This should be pretty cool. Um, I hope to find the time to, to join in. Three months is quite a long time. Um, if you haven't heard about it I'll link to his video up here and you can um, have a look and join in hopefully. One final thing, um, there are whispers, I don't know if anything's official yet, but there are whispers of an Australian maker meetup in October this year in Melbourne. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to happen yet. I don't know if anything's official, but if it happens, I'll do my best to be there. And uh, it'd be great to meet some of you. Well, I'm sorry I haven't done a video for a while, and I'm sorry this is only an update video, not a project video. Um, I seem to have had a lot going on outside of 
outside of the workshop and not a lot of chance to be in here and when I have been with the clutch and the video lights and stuff it's been pretty rushed so I haven't had a chance to uh, do as much video as I'd like but uh, thanks for the stickers anyway A.P. Tony and Marsh Wildman they'll go on the board um, I've also been doing a bit of photography I might stick a few photos in at the end of this video okay see you next time cheers